We've done all the basic logic components, now it's gonna be harder. This level is my favorite pastime, converting decimal into binary under time pressure. Uh, toggle the bits in the level panel so they add up to the decimal number in the question. You must beat level 3 to pass. Click here to turn on timer's accessibility mode. Oh, we have to do this under time pressure. Okay, all we have to do is we just have to click the numbers so that they add up to the number here. So it's 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 28, 128. Okay. It's probably going to be very slow, to be honest. But I might as well try. Try to get as many as possible. 3, 2, 1. What is 1 in binary? What is 2 in binary? Oh, it's counting up. No, it, st it stopped counting up. What is 6 in binary? It's 4 and 2. What is 11? It's 4, 2, 1. 12 is... F what is 1? What is 14 would be this? 22 is 16... Yep. Oh, that's 24. Hang on, let's see how far we can get. 5. 2. 4. Three. Okay, that's all of them. Please don't make me do big... Oh, I double click by accident. Okay, one more time. So that's two. So that's three. I mean, it just looks like I'm doing, like, addition. But to some degree, that's all... That's what the basis in numbers do. You ju you're just adding, like, powers of two. Well, normally you're adding... In like the um, the decimal number system, you're adding powers of 10. Here you're just adding powers of 2 together to get the number you need. And to, to, save, to save the whole having to write down each number, we just remember that, that uh, the first position to the right means 1, the second position means 2, third position means 3, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, okay, I can't do math that quickly. Especially when I'm talking. Although I guess it was 16 plus 9, which is 8 and 1. Oh, I... Oh, I have to beat level 3. Oh. I thought I did beat it. Okay, fine. That's fine. I don't like doing math, though. 13 is 8 plus 4 plus 1. 5 is 4 plus 1, 13 is 8 plus 4 plus 1, 8 is just 8, 16 is just 16, 2 is just 2, 11 is 8 plus 2 plus 1, 29 is 16, that's 24 and then another 5. Oh, it says so in the bottom. I could, I could just look down at the bottom. Yeah, so the hacky way of doing it, if you don't want to do math, is you just click the biggest number that that is still available. That doesn't send you over that number. So I'm, I'm going to do the hacky way. There we go. There is exactly one way, hopefully, you notice, there's exactly one way to write each number in binary. The value of each digit is always doubled of the previous digit. Yeah. That is, yeah, that's precisely correct. The nice thing about binary digits is that it's a compact representation, so you can represent every number that you want. Okay, because we're so technologically advanced, we have machines fold our socks. Unfortunately, the circuits that detect sock pairs broke the machine. This level has four inputs. Output true when two or more of them are true. Tip, don't overthink this level. There are many ways of overthinking it. Um, oh, I think what they what they meant was um, you output you like organize all of the possible outputs and then just gate them all. That would be a very painful way of doing it. Um, there are many solutions. I'm just trying to think if there's an efficient one. Probably not, right? Hmm. 
Okay, I, I think there's a there's an efficient way of doing it. Or is there? There is, I think. Okay, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna start off by checking if the first two form a pair. Okay. Uh, we'll have to or it at the end, I guess. Oh, we can have multiple inputs. Oh, that's fun. A three-pinned or. I didn't even note. I did. I. I didn't even notice that I dragged one on there. We'll do the same thing with the last two. So this checks if the first two are on, or if the last two are on. Okay. And so if the first two are on, we're done. If the last two are on, we're not. We're done. Now, if this fails, that means that <clears throat> one of these has to be off. And one of these has to be off. Okay? So, therefore, if only, therefore, for this to have any hopes of being true, exactly one of these has to be on, and exactly one of these has to be on. In, in, the, in the case where they're not both on. So what we can do is we can also quickly check to see if that's the case by just oring them. And then checking if both of these are wrong. And we're done. So. So we just need to connect these there. Connect these there. Connect these two together. And connect these there. There. And that's our nice looking little circuit. I guess we should pop. So that these wires don't crisscross. Let me reorganize it. We will put the end at the very top. Can we move these around, by the way? Oh, we can. Very neat. I guess it doesn't really matter. It'd be nice if we could separate them a bit. So we'll put an end at the bottom. We'll connect them like this. Then we'll do an or. No, oh, we'll do the we we'll use a small ore. Not a big ore. Connect these like that. And then we'll end these two. And send it out. And so what we'll see is that works, that works, that works. That works. That works. That works, and then every, and then for the three case, this should these should all work. Yeah. So exactly what I meant. If the first two are on, this end will provide an output. If the last two are on, this end will provide an output. Otherwise, if one, if exactly one of each of these two pairs are on. This end will provide an output, and in every other case, we don't have an output. Because if, say, we only have one light, then certainly the ends won't work, because only one light is on. And this end won't work, because... Well, both of the off, the bottom pairs are off, so the bottom will not light up. Um, okay, and we're done. Easy enough. Using a maximum of three components, output a dot only when an odd number of inputs are dot are true. Output true only when an odd number of inputs are true. This level has a hint. Uh, four inputs. Okay. Well, hallelujah. That's why we have an XOR for. Yeah. So the XORs, the XOR is very special. Actually, is it special? Maybe it's not special. Hmm. I guess it kind of is special. It is...
sure, whatever. Exor, much like the end and the knot. You know what? I just realized. I think previously I've been calling them transitive. They're associative <laughs> is the correct term that I should be using. Um, whoops. I'll put a small edit at the, at over there when I when I meant to say um. Associative instead of transitive. The exor is a type of associative symbol. Much like the end and or, which means that you can basically plug them all in, in different orders and they're the same circuit. So I could do this, or I could, I could, uh, I don't know, plug this this symbol in here like this, and then plug this symbol there in. Whatever, these are all the same. The point is, actually, you know what, let's lay it out like that. Because I think explaining why the circuit works is, is easier. Whoop. And then one final XOR. There we go. So, if you remember how XOR works, XOR checks both inf So, I think if you right click, there you go. XOR returns true only if what exactly one of the inputs is true so in a way what we can say is xor is true if the if one input if an odd number of inputs is true and xor is false if an even number of inputs is true we can technically we can technically say that for XOR. It's it's simpler it's simple to 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 figure that out because there are so many so few options, but in a sense we can then apply that further. In this case, this little bit will light up only when um, one symbol is tr exactly one is true, an odd number is true. And so then if we add another uh, signal in, now an even number of these. So the first, if we just if we ignore that this last, uh, this last output exists, if we just ignore that it exists, um, if this is on, that means there is one up, there is an odd number of outputs in the amongst the first two. And then if we add another sim, another signal, um, that means that now there's an even number of signals that are true. So let's take an example here. So if it's if it's on, there's an odd number of symbols. If we add another one, now there's an even number. We've added one more. And so now this XOR will output false. See, it's false. It doesn't really matter what what we have in the top. If we if it's this is off, that means there's an even number of symbols. And then we add an additional signal which means now we have an odd number of signals and therefore now this will return true because of how XOR works and so we get and then we can just repeat that idea over and over again exactly like that XOR is a very cool uh, uh, gate very useful as well um, it's useful because it has this cancellation property. I get, I think the cancellation property might show up at some point later on, but the point is you can, ex you can XOR more than like a string say it was the same logic. Um, and if you do that process again with the same string, it cancels itself out. We'll see if it shows up. It probably will. In our education system, we traditionally teach by tricking students into doing the wrong thing and then teasing them. I'm not sure it benefits the students, but teachers love it. 
Create a circular dependency. This is a circuit where the input of a component relies on its own output. In a circular dependency situation, it is not possible to determine the output of a component because you would first need to determine the input, which relies on the output and so on, hence circular. This state is normally not allowed in other levels, but in this level the goal is to create it so you understand what it is before going forward. Make an input, make a circuit where the input of a component depends on its own output. What do you mean, like something like this? Oh, maybe I need to actually add a gate. Like that. Create a circular dependency involving at least two components. Does that mean I have to make it clash? So, this work. Hey! hey. Okay, yeah. Well, can you do that? No, I don't think... I think, yeah, in theory, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, at least when we talk about physical components. In the future, there's going to be this idea of recursion. Which we'll probably explore later. The output component of this level is a binary counter where the first three pins correspond to 1, 2, and four. Use the binary counter to display the number of signals. Okay, yeah. Ooh, this... This might be interesting. So... Actually, that is, that is interesting. Is there an easy way of doing it? Hmm. Actually, that, that's kind of neat, because they actually gave the XOR one before this level, because you could actually use it to solve this level. In fact, I think you have to, because the neat thing about thinking about it in this functional way is that you could, in theory, think about splitting the uh, this this thing into three separate functions, each determining the output of each of these uh, symbols, so to speak. I'm trying to think if there is a way of doing it in a neat way, because there is a way of just doing it. Can, can I get rid of this? Ah, there you go. Because there's a way of just doing it, and I don't know if I want to just do it. I want to see if there's a, a neat way of doing it. Um. Hmm. Probably not. I mean, we can do we can do the easy one first, which is the four. The four one will actually. Which one's the four one? Oh wait, there, there's there's wait, there is a four, is there? That's one. That's three. That'll be seven. Okay, so the four one's the bottom one. So the four one's easy. I guess we should be using... No, we can use a 3-pin one. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. Actually, yeah, the only reason we can use a 3-pin one is because of the associative nature of end, as I said before. Um, very useful. 
Okay, so that's a 4 1. That will only output true when all of them are on, so that gives us false the way we want it to be. Now, for odd, we want to build that XOR gate that we that we saw previously, because that will be one exactly when it's odd, zero exactly when it's even. Uh, I don't think we have a big one, so we have to use three of them. And that's basically what one does. Every time you add one, that one symbol goes off and on. So that will be correct for that one. And now we just need the tour. The two one. Wait, hang on. I just thought of a, a, a potential hack. You know, no, n whatever. There, there, I think there is a hacky way of doing it, but... Yeah, we'll do it. We can use the solution... For the sock problem. If you remember the sock problem. Which outputs... Oh gosh. We're gonna need more space. Um, the sub problem returns true if at least two of the symbols are on. And we can use this solution, although we'll have to be slightly careful. Because... Um, there's one case... We also want, in the last case, when all four of them are... are on, we want that to be false. However, we can take care of that problem. What we'll do is we will we will have to create a controlled NOT gate, which is so a controlled NOT gate. Wait, can I save this? If I exit, does it save? Okay. I guess I can just quickly enter sandbox. Is there a way of doing this? Hmm. Maybe this thing? Toggles a bit. Yeah, it's basically this gate. Um, hang on, I built it within the level. Because I, I can't see a better way of doing it. Oops. Did I just? Maybe I should be that one. Okay. So controlled knot gate basically does the knot exactly when um It's actually the, what the XOR gate does, kind of. Except it's an XNOR gate, sorry. That's what the XNOR gate does. The XNOR gate is kind of a controlled knot. No, it is the XOR gate. What? I just grabbed the wrong one. Okay, there we go. Basically... If the bottom signal is off, this just behaves like nothing. So it's so it's, it just lets the current pass through. But if we put a current through this, now it adds, acts like a NOT gate. It's 
false. It's false when the current is true and true when the current is false. So now it's false, so the current is true, true, now the current is false. So that's that's another use of the XOR gate. It basically acts like a controlled knot. And we'll use this at the very end. Basically saying, if you are... If the if there are more than four socks, normally you would return true. I'm going to force you to return false. That there's probably another solution we can have, but this is the the hacky way of doing it because uh, it doesn't generalize properly to higher order solutions. But it doesn't matter. We don't need to do higher order. Okay, we need to do we need to replicate that a uh, circuit from the sock symbol. Uh, that's the sock problem. So that was. Let's see if I remember how I built it. We have two ends. One on the top. One on the bottom. So let me just bring the pins out like this, so we can work with. More space. Okay, so we connected them like this. Let me just plunk in the output or I'll put it there. And the center part we'll do. So it's an AND gate at the end. And on top of that, it's two OR gates. Right there. Oh wait, we definitely we definitely need the the two pin because it won't work otherwise. With the or it doesn't matter. With the end it does. <clears throat> okay. And this this will work. So as I said, it's the it's the hacky, the hacky implementation where this would normally be on, which means it would add a two, which we don't want. So in the case when there's a four, this XOR will block. The output. If we wanted to be certain, we could replace it with um, with something that only outputs if this is false and this is true. This just as an, an extra case, but it doesn't matter. Okay. So yeah, it's a combination of three things. This is the XOR gate from from the counting signal problem. This AND gate just combines all three, all four, and that puts four if it's all correct. This is the SOC problem that returns true if two or more of the symbols are true, but then we we block the, sim the signal if there are four SOCs available, because then we want it to be off. Boom. I shouldn't say easy but efficient probably not we measure we measure the universe with numbers so your machine must learn to count treat the inputs as zero one depending if they are off or on add them together in binary such that the result is either zero or one as with normal addition if the result cannot be described as one digit set the carry to one fair enough okay so this is what I was thinking in the previous problem, is you could tr basically try this. It's basically this system that we, we could have built this system and then kind of just linked it to itself, adding one each time. But that's not an issue. This is, a, this is not a difficult problem. So XOR, as I said, that's how we want to do the, the one thing. 
XOR is true when uh, one of the sim the inputs is on, and it returns false if an even number is on. So much like how an even number would have an even number at the end, and an odd number would have an odd number at the end, this one will have one at the end if the number is odd, a zero at the end if the number is even. That's exactly what we want sum to be. The carry only happens when both of the symbols are, are one. Because that means that we ideally want to we want to uh, have two, but we can't have two because we only have space for one in the sum. So we carry the one over. Like that. We only need to carry over the one if both of the inputs are true, because then, um, because then that means we, you know, we go over. This level introduces the delay line component. It takes its input and outputs to one tick later. Construct a circuit that outputs the same as the input, just delayed by two ticks. But that's that adds a whole new dimension to this game because honestly. Yeah, this is this is the part of the game where we start going into like mechan mechanics rather than just going into like logic. Everything before that you can just you could simulate this with pen and paper. Now we we're getting to the um, as in you could write it down in mathematics. Here this is gonna be painful because we're gonna have to deal with time timing, you know, parallel components is all that jazz. Anyway, we need to make something that's delayed by two. We can just do this. But just adding two components. There we go. The input and output of this level are using bytes instead of bits. One of the two new components you're given takes a byte and splits it into bits, and the other does the opposite. Using those components, figure out how to double the input number. Okay, bits. So a byte is just eight bits, basically. It's basically a number that's between 0 and 100 and uh, 255 including the last number so it's uh yeah so it's just um yeah so it's, it's just a number between 0 and 255 whereas a bit is a number between 0 and 1 now this when we plug it in, will return us a number. We'll, we'll light up these pins in a way such that the sum of all of these pins adds up to the input number. So let's say this. 83. The 1, 2, 16, and 64 numbers light up. And all of these numbers added up gives us 83. Now naturally, one thing we can do to double a number is break it apart in this way, double each of its components, and then add them together. And this should double the uh, the final number. So what I mean is, 32. 32 is equal to, well, 32. What we can do is we can double it to say 64. Actually, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll be cheeky. I'll, I'll move it up by one like that. What we can do is we can double it to give us 64. And let's say we had the number 48, which is the number 16 and the number 32. So it's 60 plus 32. We can double each of these components. We can double the 32 to get 64. And then we can double the 16 to get 32 and add them together. And because we double each of the components, when we add them back together, we get double the original number. So if you see where I'm going with this, a very simple circuit solution to this problem is we just connect each input to the corresponding output that is double that of the input. And this will have the effect of doubling, as you can see as I put various inputs in, this will have the effect of doubling. 
the number. Um, right. Except in the case when we have integer overflow. So in this case, the number is smaller, and that's because normally we would double the 128 and add it back in. The only issue is we don't have a number. We don't have access to the number 256 because it doesn't exist in this board. So this will work. This is still technically double, but it's double modulo 256, meaning that if you add 256 to 40, you'll end up with 296, which is in fact double of 148. So it kind of wraps around. Um, but yeah, here we go. That's done. Full letter. In the previous level, we added two together two inputs. This time we add three. Once again, add the inputs together in binary such that the result is e to zero one. As with normal addition, if the result cannot be described as one digit, set the carry to one. Yeah, this is the full letter. So this time we have three inputs and we're adding it together. The difference between the previous, the half adder and the full adder is that this is effectively the same thing as adding, except um, with the half adder, we don't give the option of adding a carry symbol. See, the carry symbol is we use this to carry to the next calculation that we do. Kind of like how we add all the symbols up column by column. Um, in order to calculate the number accurately, we need to carry the symbols over as we do the calculations. But the half adder doesn't give us a way of getting the previous carry, but the full adder does. And so what effectively this does, we need to add these three numbers together. As we as we was before, we use the XOR as a way of um, figuring out what that what the digit is supposed to be. Like that. So that's that. That's the sum. Um, and for the carry, once again, we can't express the sum properly with one bit if our number ends up being more than two. So we have to carry the symbol over if at least two of these symbols are on. Uh, which, how do we do this? They're probably, they're probably neater solutions to... To what I'm thinking. Um... That's, that's just a hacky solution. Not the hacky solution, but like the, the, the long one. We take... We check if the first are on. We check if the second two are on. And then we check if the first and the second... Uh, the first and the third one are on. And if any of these turn on... This means that we, not this one, we need the triple R. And if any of these symbols are on, this means that if, if, if any of these are on, this means that at least two of these symbols are on, which means that uh, we have a carry because we the, the actual sum is more than one, which we can't represent, so we have to carry the symbol over like that. Um, there's probably a cleaner solution than this, but sure, go for it. In a previous level, you learned how we don't allow circular dependencies. Now, you must learn the one exception. The delay, now, the, blah, 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 blah. the delay line is allowed to depend on its own input. This is because its input does not influence the rest of the circuit until the next tick. 
Square pins in the game never affect the output in the same tick. They therefore never cause circular dependencies. Output dot on the even ticks and a false on the even ticks and true on the odd ticks. Ooh, that is fun. Ah, if anyone plays Minecraft, that is the. <laughs> You've probably seen this before. Actually, yeah, this is this is exactly analogous to the uh, the layer and to the repeater in uh, Minecraft. It does exactly what a repeater does, and if anyone uses a comparator in Minecraft, we're basically building that machine. We're building a comparator, uh, just in logic gates. So, <clears throat> what we need. We start with the delay line, and we're going to. Well, okay, this this input this input is always going to be false. Hmm, how do we do this? I think we we use an XOR, so or an XNOR. Oh, it doesn't even give us an XNOR. No, I think I'm going to use a NAND gate, actually. So, what would the NAND gate remember? I lost a few frames. I'm losing all the frames. I'm waiting for the the the, the stream to become stable again. Cuz there seems to be a bit of instability at the moment. Okay, I think we're back. Yeah, we lost around 600 frames. Fun. Okay. Remember the NAND gate is true except with both... Oh wait, we need... We need this to, to be true then. The... I guess that means we need a NOR gate. Okay, people are coming in. Wait. Apparently, it's a random party hanging up, happening in the corridor. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't ruin the recording too much. I don't know why they suddenly appeared. It's late. Anyways. So, with an AND gate. Hang on. Oh wait, the ticks are not on. We need to do like that. Okay. So let me restart. Hang on, let me let me let me do a step by step. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, we don't even have to be this complicated. We don't need to use an AND gate. We just need to use a NOT gate. Oh, we can rot. Can we rotate this, by the way? Why do we rotate this? Okay, I don't know if we can rotate it. That's fine. 
We don't need to rotate to Okay. It outputs when it this outputs true, then the true will appear through here, and then it will become false. And then the false, this will be false, and then the false gets transmitted through, and then this will become true again. It's the circle depends the issue, except Yeah, just like that. So just like the comparator in Minecraft, we can use this to get pulsating symbols. Very cool. I don't know. Yeah, I overcomplicated it slightly, but that's okay. I love overcomplicating things. If components output different values on the same wire, you get an error. However, some components will have gray output pins. These are not outputting at all when the component is not enabled. This is the case for the bit switch component. When the top pin is off, the output is disabled. This means that more than one of these gray output pins can connect to the same wire and not cause an error, as long as only one of them is enabled at a time. Using two NOT gates and two switches, build an XOR gate. Okay, I see what I mean. So, I'm guessing normally, if I did something like this. Oh, okay, I guess they're not complaining. Wait. Surely not, right? Short circuit. Okay, fair enough. So this will only cause an issue if one of the symbols is um, different from the other. Which is a bit of a weird thing to allow, but we'll, I guess we'll do it. There's probably a solution that doesn't require us to do that anyways. So... So what this does Yeah, this is kind of a weird fancy gate that we saw at the beginning which the which um which basically outputs 0 except when the first input is true in this imp Well, I guess except when both inputs are true in this case. This is just an AND gate. Sorry. This is just an AND gate. Except the difference is it doesn't short circuit if the bottom one isn't on. Uh, sorry, if the top one isn't on. Sorry. Interesting. Um, okay, this one I have to think about because I don't think I've ever encountered this. By the way, does this book keep expanding? Ooh. Binary, bytes, circular dependency, circular recipes. Most circular dependencies are chaotic. Wait, what, is, what do you have about circular dependencies? A circular dependency is when the input of a component changes based on its own output. This simulator does not allow circular dependencies and instead triggers an error. The exception to this are square pins that do not influence the output of the same tick. They can therefore not cause circular dependencies. Most circular dependencies are chaotic, not useful, and introduced by error. There are a few useful exceptions though. Given that they are enabled in the options menu, this simulator allows some of these. NOR latches. The NOR latch stores a 1-bit value which is always available on the wire queue. NAND latch. The NAND latch stores a 1-bit value which is always available on the wire queue. AND OR latch. The AND OR latch stores a 1-bit value which is always available on the wire queue. Yeah, okay. This is, this is another Minecraft thing. I don't remember the exact name, but you can you can basically store data by feeding an output to itself and then turn it off and on. Um, I 
Okay, my the internet is unstable again. Um. Okay, let me go back to this thing. So it kind of wait. We have to combine these somehow. Oh, I guess we can combine them like this. Yeah, okay. Oh, I lost my switch. So normally this would cause an error if we just use regular AND gates. But if we do it this way, it won't cause an error. Well, it will... It won't cause an error, but it won't be correct. We have to still... Uh, ignore one of the inputs. Which window? Well, we want to keep it off as much as possible. So probably we want to XOR the input. So what, what I mean is, hang on, let me clean this up. So we'll do this. And for here, we go here. And there. Okay, the switch is there. We're gonna XOR the input. No, that's the output. That's, sorry, that's uh, the, the switch. I think... This probably works. There we go. I think the other solution would work. Except for the fact that um, it might lead to a short circuit, probably. Yeah, both of these are on. I guess it wouldn't really be a short circuit. Oh, but it wouldn't work either, right? I guess it doesn't matter. And I guess there's always a scenario. I guess it's always a scenario where um, one of the where they're both going to be on. I think probably. Unless ah, okay. Unless no, scratch that, scratch that. I think this is the actual the intended solution. We're going to connect this output to both of these. So only one of these is going to be on. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing as before, because these basically were act like AND gates. But now exactly one of these is going to be on for every input. There we go. We fixed the issue. Okay, got it. We're, ex we're experimenting with how background influence cognitive functions in Earthlings. When invert is on, the output the opposite of value. Otherwise, just put out, just output value as is. So as you can see, this this table just looks exactly like an XOR table. So as you can expect. Despite the funny background, you figured out this was just an XOR gate in disguise. Well done. Cool. Uh, very cool. Oh, well, we could maybe get all of the uh, the logic gate stuff done this time. That, could, that would be fun. 
assembly challenge. Are we really halfway through this? Oh well, that that was too optimistic. Maybe a third of the way. Close to, close to it though. You may think it is unethical to eat all the earth things that don't win the competition, but actually it is okay because you lived good lives in the wild and we don't let the meat go to waste. This is too vegan for me. Or each bit of the input, blah, blah, blah. Or each bit of the input byte and output the result. For example, da 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 da. Wait, so, oh, it's going to be a number. Okay. That's not difficult. We're going to need bit splitters, though. <laughs> Wait, is this might actually be a massive-est um, diagram. Hmm. I don't think it can be helped, though. Yeah, okay, we'll do it. Although we'll separate these two out a bit. Because there's going to be a lot of wires. Uh, so one issue is this game. Lots of wires. Basically, we're going to do exactly what they say. One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, is there a way of moving? Oh, like this. Multisect. Move them one, one go. There we go. Maybe I should space them out. Should I space them? Let's space them out a bit. There we go. And now, fun part. We connect all the wires. Oh, we still have more wires to connect, by the way. Look at how pretty this looks. Nice. And now we're just going to take an input. And do the exact same thing. Done. Yeah, this was just a as-is kind of problem. Our previous model of brain size being the main predictor of intelligence was naive. Tool making and usage is key in the early evolutionary stage of developing, uh, of developing intelligence. Therefore, the number of arms on a creature is clearly the main predictor of intelligence. Did you know that there are sea creatures of your planet with four times as many arms as you, and they are doing better in tests? Yeah, fair. Octopuses are more... They are better than us in every way. They, for one, are not killing the planet. Not each bit of the bit input. Oh, gosh. Are we really going to keep doing <laughs> problems like these? I don't think there's a simpler way of doing it than the way... The obvious way of doing it. Because we aren't given any complicated 8-bit things, so we have to break it down. And we do actually have to use at least one gate for each input. Alright. Bit not. I guess this is supposed to introduce... Allow us to uh, build more complex... Systems using 8 bits. Gates. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay.
I mean, there's not much to say about this. Oh wait, did I miss? Oh no, I didn't miscount. I thought I didn't put enough lock gates down. Okay. Run. Yeah, this is not exactly a hard one. Add the two input bits. Each output bit in the output should be a result of the addition of the corresponding bits from the input and potentially a carry. If the result does not fit in eight bits, turn the output carry. You can think of it as the ninth bit. Finally, there is an input that carry as well. This is useful for combine for chaining together bit byte adders to add larger numbers. You can think of this carry as adding either zero or one. Use this hint if you get stuck. Okay, this one might actually be a big one. A big one. As one might say. Whoop. Wait, what? What's this thing? Do we have the... The adder? Oh, we do actually have a full adder. I don't know what this thing does. I'm gonna be honest. Or why we need it. Toggles a value. Oh, I guess it turns it on off, off, off and on and we get to pass numbers through. Ah, we probably don't need it. If we need it, we don't. We'll, we'll use it later. Anyway, we have a full leather. The thing we built previously. Thank goodness, I was worried we might actually have to do this whole thing. Like, in terms of just gates. Although I guess that's what the... The, the sandbox is there to do. So yeah, we built the full ladder this particular way, on purpose. So it's eight, it's eight of these. We'll need eight of these, one, two, one for each bit. Seven, eight. Let's put the, so the carry will go on top. Now naturally, when you do addition, you start with the lowest... Oh, wait, we need to break it down first. Hang on. <laughs> we'll, we'll put these separately. And split. Split. We might need to move some stuff back. Because it is a big one. Okay. Naturally, with all additions, you start with... The least significant bit. So that's what we'll do. We'll need to add in. So we'll also, every time, we need to add in the carry. A carry is just like adding an extra thing. So we'll add the first digit. The. Which one's the. The sum, I think, is the top number. Oh, wait, we need to do it in 8 bits. So we need to pass that in. Okay, so we need to pass in the, the number. And then the carry goes to the next addition we make in the twos digit. Guess we could make it go downwards like that. Like that. And then like that. And we keep going like this. Very fancy. There's not really much to this to this um, to this thing. So we'll we'll just we'll just chain all these together, and then yeah, the the final carry will carry it over to the next bit. Oh wait, we want to do we want to plug into the bottom one. So we add the two digits of the same denomination, and then if we have to, we carry it over to the next digit. As I said, exactly how we do regular arithmetic. 
Okay. Then we need to plug in this. Plug this in. Bonk. And here we go. We got our full-on calculator. Let's test it out. If we want to add, let's say, 12. So that would be this. Wait. Oh, okay. It's, it's arranged that way. Okay, so 12 would be this. 12 plus... Let's choose easy numbers. 36 would be this. No, this is 48. There we go. If we added one, 49. Exciting. Um, should we add 64? So 64 plus 36 would be 100. There we go, it works. Yeah, so it's a full-on calculator, which is adding the digits together just like you would do on a, in a proper summation. You write down the two the two things, matching up the columns, the zero, the ones, the tens, the hundreds, and then you you add the two digits up, you add a carry, and then you do it again. Much we basically did the exact same thing. You need, you need to know the difference between things. You need subtraction. Oh, to know the difference between things, you need subtraction. To get subtraction, first you need negative numbers. Ooh, si signed integers. This level introduces two complements, the most common representation for negative numbers. Here the highest digit is negated. For bytes, this means the eighth digit changes its value from 128 to minus 128. To, you finish this level when you get to level three or beyond. Please give me more time. I, I am going to die if they give me 10 seconds to do maths. Okay. So this is the exact same thing, except 128 is now minus 128 instead of plus. But we're still doing the same thing. We're just clicking numbers to try to add up to a number. Okay, what is one? One is still one. 15 is still all of these. Minus 1 is all of them. Lit up. Minus 2, we, d we remove 1. Minus 3, we remove 2. Minus 5, we just remove 4. Uh, minus 14. Like that. Minus 12. What is minus 8? What is minus 16? Minus 2, like that. Minus 23. Uh, ah, shoot. As I said, I don't, I don't want to do math this quickly. To go between negative and positive, you flip all the bits and add 1. If the highest bit is um, this, the value is always negative. Oh, if the highest bit is on, the, the value is always negative. The bit adder you built also works with signed numbers. There is still only exactly one way to write each number. All correct. Yeah. It's basically just the same number representation, except you minus 128 instead of a plus. Even though he did not pass our test, we decided to keep the dog. Unlike most earthlings, he is fluffy and follows simple instructions well. We might want to team you two up, since you complement each other's shortcomings well. When the bit selector input is false, output bit A, otherwise output bit B. Oh, I get it. It's a it's a giant switch. So this is what we want this for. <laughs> okay, that's that's not too hard. Thank goodness they gave us this switch. Um. So when it's false, so in other words, we want this to be true. We have put A. Oh wait, we 
need to plug this into there. So, a number. Then we toggle it. Wait, hang on, we need to put another number here. 66. I think that's what they want. So when it's off, it's 146. If it's on, it's 66. We're using the exact same technique of just using a switch. Perfect. Next, taking an input as signed, where the eighth bit is a minus 128, make a component that takes a number and negates it. For example, four negated would become minus four, nine negated would become nine. Yeah, so... This is the important part about these numbers, so let's see. What's important is all of the numbers added together is minus one. I guess that's not really helpful. <laughs> um. Hmm. So, yeah, he did say this in a previous comment that when you flip all of the bits you basically what you're doing is you're you're getting its negation plus minus one i don't remember if it's i think it's it's negation minus one so you can negate you can negate a number by um effectively what you're going to be doing is negating it and then adding one to it For this number, for this level, you probably want to turn on sign numbers, so the highest bit show shows as a minus 128. Click plus 255 located in the top panel. Ah, oh, thanks. Um, yeah, we're going to use this adder. Although, it's going to be the weirdest addition. Oh, actually. Hmm. I don't know if it's efficient to do it this way. As in, we get an addition, an adder. Then what we want to do is we want to... We want to grab ourselves... I guess we technically want to grab ourselves a number zero. Wait, we want the other one. This. Does it automatically become zero? Okay, thank goodness. Actually, we might, we might not even need it. Um... Yeah, so how do we explain how do we explain negation? Actually no, that's that's exactly how we would explain negation. So I will do this using paint. We're gonna do it using paint. I can still hear so much noise coming from the other the other room. This is Prop, can you see the entire thing? I think you can. Okay, paint. Oh gosh, I need to plug in my tablet. I unplugged it to get myself more space, but I should have I should have known that I'm gonna need to write stuff. What's the time, by the way? I'm having way too much fun. Okay, we have around 20 minutes left. Yeah, I was thinking this was going to be too cerebral. It's going to become more cerebral when we start doing assembly. Uh, trust me, this is going to become stuff that I can't even do, really. Uh, okay. So just double checking. Actually, I'll, I'll do this. So. As I said before. All we're doing is we're just adding numbers together. So let's say we have 
73. That is just 64 plus um, 16. So that is... Wait, I think that's already too much. Yeah, that's already too much. Sorry. 16. Um, the next number... Oh, we just need to add an 8. Plus 8 plus 1. There we go. So, now I, now at some point I said the following. If we add all the numbers up that's available, we get minus 1. Minus 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is equal to minus 1. You can check the math yourself. The point is... If we flip all the bits, that means we're adding all the numbers that are not in this list. So that's minus 128 um, plus 32 plus 16 plus 4 plus 2. So we get a number here. What is this number? Let's call it X. All we know is that if we add the rest of these symbols, so if we add the 73 to it, That is equivalent to adding all the numbers up. So we, we, we have some of these numbers. We're going to add the rest of the numbers that we skipped over to this sum. And then what we're essentially going to get is this minus 1 back. So what we get is actually x is equal to, 70 to 73, no, minus 73, minus 1. So essentially, to get a number back, well, all we need to do is we need to add 1 to, to its negation when we flip all the bits. That's all we have to do. To, to basically remove this, this, this minus 1. Okay. So, if we go back to the game, and I re- and I clean up my dang feed that's covered in stuff. <laughs> um, actually, we don't need to use these, because- oh, I'm, I'm using the, the pen for no reason now. Uh, I probably should- I should be unplugging it, but maybe I'll use it later. Okay. I think we have a logic knot, yeah. We can just use the logic knot, and then all we then need to do is add an additional bit. So, we pass this to the knot. And as predicted, it will become its negation minus one. So, Let's say we have, if we just plug in random numbers, see, it's always going to be its negation minus one. Then we just have to add one. There really is, I don't think there's an easy way, well, I guess probably this is the easy way of doing it. There we go. It's technically not the proper way of doing it. We're using the carry in kind of a hacky way. But this is how you would do it. Um, yeah, you ha you have to add one. So you use this this you or you could if you wanted to do it the proper way, what you would be using. You would be using this to generate the number 1, and then adding it, but this works too. Oh, it checks every... <laughs> it actually checked all the solutions. Very nice. Yeah, it also works... Neg this system works with negative numbers. If we start off with a negative number, we'll get a positive number, just because the math always adds up like that. Okay, this level has two bit inputs and two bit outputs. Your goal is to copy from one of the inputs to one of the outputs. There's a one there. 
the first bit input. Um, I do. I, I just realized I haven't been checking to see if my camera actually hides. Ah, eh, whatever. You just need to trust me. The first bit input determines which input you should copy from. The second bit input determines which output you should copy to. Check this hint if you get stuck. I'm sure it's fine. Um, wait, actually I might need to brief again. Okay, I think... Oh, it, it says it here. In zero and one. Okay. It's like a mega switch. Kinda. Yeah, so actually we, we are exactly using a switch. <laughs> We're going to be just using the switches. Oh, it actually gives us just four switches. Very convenient. So, we'll be using these. We connect these. I assume we get access to some knots. Yes, we do. So, if we accept the... Z so, what we're going to do is we're going to connect these together. And then like this. I foresee the entire solution. So, what we're going to do... Well, if it's false, that means we want this one to be on. So, we need to put the negation here. And if it's false, we, if it's true, we want this one to be on. So, we just need to plug it in directly. Same thing here. If it's false, we want this to be on. So, we need to plug this in with a negation. And if it's true, we need this one to be on. So, we just plug it in straight. And this will do exactly what we want it to do. So we have 20 minus 124. Now we're taking from zero and putting it to zero. Switch. We're taking it from the bottom and putting it to the top. Switch. Taking it from the bottom, putting it to the bottom. Switch. Taking it from the top, adding it to the bottom. And we're done. Perfect. Next. The delay line only allows us to save a value for one tick. But sometimes a component can take can that a component that can save a value for longer periods of time is useful. We want you to build such a component. In this level, we have two inputs. When the first input is green, update the save value. The second input is the value. Always output what is currently saved. This is a diagram of the component we want you to build. Save enable save value. Okay, I see what we need to do. So yeah, so this... Oh, we already have that little bit. Cool. So this little bit... Is gonna be feeding it into itself. Basically. Just like constantly. Now. I think this is where we use two switches. Again. It's always switches. It's always switches. <laughs> We'll plug this into the first switch, like that, bonk. We'll plug this one. We'll plug the new value into the second switch. And we'll connect like this. And so now all we need to do, same thing we've always done. If it's false, we don't save, meaning we want the first value to repeat itself. So we plug in negation to this one. If we do want to save, oh, we don't need the negation. We just plug this straight in. And we're done. This will always output the current value. So as you can see, currently, it's off. Now let's say I turn on this thing. Oh, I turned on save. Hang on.
Okay. So, my solution works. As you can see, it worked. I was hoping I could simulate it myself. Is there a way of in disabling the... The ticks? I guess not. Wait, we can comment? <gasps> Always leave helpful comments. Okay, that's actually kind of useful. I guess the point is it's going to become more complicated. Yeah, so it does exactly what we need it to be. There's no way I can show you properly. Um, if this is on, it it out it sends itself back in. If it's off, no, if it's off, it sends itself back in. If it's on. This is off, so it can't send its own signal back, and it'll just take the new symbol. Oop. Okay. Next. System. Create a circuit that can save an or load a byte. When the first input is true, load the memory and send it to the output. When the second bit is True, save the input bit byte. The output has an enable pin. Enable it only on load. Ah, okay. That's the enable pin. Well, that should be easy. Done. And then the save bit, it, we do exactly the same thing as before. Um, except we don't have a delayer. Wait. I think we need to build it ourselves. Although I guess we could use this, this one instead. So we connect this one here. So wait, no. This is, if it's false, I assume it's the first bit. If it's true, it's the second bit. So, so the load will still be there, the save will be here. Um, hang on. I think we might have to, to build a delayer for um, eight bits ourselves. By the way, this output will feed it to itself. So this is gonna be... This is gonna act as our delayer. That we're gonna just plug back in like that. Um... Oh wait, what's that one? Yeah, maybe we can actually simplify it a bit by using the memory. We just use eight of these. Okay. 
Can this... Is there a way of adding multiple of these? I like this. Okay. So we're just going to use this to store each individual memory slot. Hang on, should I... No, I'll just do it. There's honestly not much to this. Wait, actually... I think this is the correct implementation. I think it was bottom as the input to save. Okay, and now we just need to connect all of these. that and like that so now it's just like oh look a number tick ah, okay it's doing it for us yeah it's doing exactly what we wanted to do this is saving our bits we we turn this on to save the bit and then the load just triggers the loading stuff. It's not too complicated. Create a component that can switch a signal between two pins. What? Wait, so all it's doing is, uh... This... And this? Is that it? Okay. With three bits of inputs, there are eight combinations. Make a circuit that selects one output for each of the eight combinations. No more le or no less than one bit should be true at a time. With three bits of input, there are eight combinations. Make a circuit that selects one output. That selects one output. Okay, wait, hang on. Ah, I see. Three inputs. Eight outputs. And they want... Exactly one of them to be on. Oh wait, they actually want a specific one to be on. Okay. Hmm. <sighs> Interesting. Okay. Um, we could probably use these actually. Somehow. So, let's 
Since we since we have access to them, you know? We should probably use them. Um Yeah, so we have our true we have our true and false. And then I guess what we need, should do. Oh, we should use these end gates. Yeah, fancy end gates. We just need eight of these. Boom. Oh wait. Hang on, we need to use the Go away. There we go. Okay. So because exactly one of these is going to be on at a time, if we just do every possible combination. So that one... Uh, which one will do? Oh, we need to also do it a specific way. So the second one. Oh wait, we we have to do the bottom one. Yeah. Or do we? No, we do. It. We do need to do the top one. That was correct. That was correct. So when all of these are on. The first one's on, and when any of the inputs are different, these, these will switch. Like that. Now we want the second bit to be... So we'll, 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 we'll be helpful. On this input, we want this one to be on. So let me just plug all of these in to make it clear. What we're trying to do. Go away. So... When, in this case, we want the second, this second one to be on. So, in other words, we just all we need to do is we just need to collect all of the the green ones that are currently on. Like that. Oh, second one's on. On this input, we'll do this one, this one, that one. On the third input, we want so this one. So that's that one. That one. That one on this input, so that's this one. We want this, that, that. On this one, we'll do this, this, and that. On this input, we want this, this, and this. Please, please tell me I got these in the right one. I think that, I think we did. Okay. Perfect. We had our interns add a disable bit to this component. We were tired of looking at him running in circles and were looking for other pointless and tedious tasks to give him. I don't know what that means. Create a oh wait, we don't need the accent. Create a device that can add, that can or, nand, nor, or and two inputs. The third input will be the instruction. An instruction is just what we call the number that determines what to compute. So it's either so zero is or, one is nand, two is nor, three is and. Also, you can't move the red components in this level for for reasons that will be revealed later. No. That's annoying. All right. I like moving them around. I, do we? I think, in theory, we should have all of the symbols we need. Because or and not both, we can use or and not to form any, any uh, circuits that we want. So it just comes down to um, selecting the right circuit. And I guess we do this using a bunch of switches. Actually, do we have access to the... We do have access to a bit decoder. Fun. Ah, and that's the disable thing that we were given. That's what that little thing that says. We're giving this little thing. Fun. 
Although it's a number. Yeah, so we do need to actually... Um... Okay, I guess we do need to, to use this thing first. Hmm. <laughs> and then how do we do this? Okay, so let's 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 set everything else up first. Because all we're gonna be using all we're gonna be doing is four switches. No, we need eight bit switches. And we're just gonna do the arithmetic first and then we're just gonna switch or are we actually wait wait I have a, I have an idea or Nant nor and wait why did it do it in that weird order <laughs> why? If they laid it out symmetrically, it would be easy. Because now we have to do, like, a weird... Yeah, okay. Sure. I think they're just doing it to annoy us. Because what we can do... Oh, wait, no, because we only have access to Nors or Ends. Um... Maybe they're not doing it to annoy us. Actually, they did it cleverly because we don't have access to an AND gate, but we can build an AND gate. An AND gate is, by the way, an OR gate, except both the inputs and the outputs have been flipped. This is an AND gate. So I think maybe the reason they laid it out specifically that way is to give us is so that we only need to use Okay, we still need to use a bunch of switches. But we get to use it in one component. So something like this. Let's say the bottom will always be a knot. And then the top will be... Yeah. And here will also be not. Exactly in this manner. There's going to be an OR in the center. It's going to be not. An OR in the center. I guess we can do that. Wait, we have to put the, the switch before the knot. My bad. Or it shouldn't. Yeah, we have to put the knot before the R. Because the knot is still making stuff. The switch won't. Wait, where's this one coming from? Hang on, why is this switch on? This switch shouldn't be on. Ah, there we go. Yeah, exactly like this. There we go. Boom. Boom. Okay.
Okay. And now the idea is that we can toggle which version of the thing we want based on the output of this, this OR thing. So what we're going to do, I guess we use the bit splitter. So the first line, I think we need to connect this, this, this one to, um, let me clear all these. We need to clear the first one. The first one should be to not, oh no, just to the, what do we want? The first one we wanted to let the raw value through, I think. And then the second one we want to flip it. If we flip it, so, let me see. The first, so the first bit will flip the second one. So it will make the or, if we, if we turn it on, oh no, that's the second bit. Sorry, that's the two bit. This two bit will be controlling whether or not we do an or at the end. So that will turn this this original OR gate that we have into a NOR gate, if we turn it on, it will turn an AND gate into an AND gate by double negating the NAND part. The first bit will turn an OR gate into a NAND gate. That's what happens if you if you NOR the, the first two. You'll get a NAND gate. So, what I mean is... The first bit is, we'll plug it into there. We'll need to split into two. We'll need to know. Is there a way? There has to be a way of rotating it. Is it R? If there's no way that's annoying. Um. Okay. So this one will let the first value in. If it's uh. If it's off, which is exactly what we want, and then this one we want to flip. Okay, so this, if we... Hang on. Code. There we go. So, yeah, this will flip the, the first part. Then, we want to do the same thing here. Negate this. So we want to let the original one through if if it's off. And we want to let the flipped version through if it's off. Okay, like this. This circuit should work. There's not a good way to demonstrate this, but I guess... Um, yeah, so currently it's on OR. So... You'll see if I put the same symbol on, it won't change. But if we add a new symbol, let's say the 4. The 4 wasn't there originally, so now it's added. And we basically ordered these two numbers. If we then change it to, uh, let's say, NAND. Okay, let's say AND. So now the only bits that are together is the 1s. Yeah, exactly like that. So we will only get the 1s. Um... Similarly, if we add the three here, uh, the two, sorry, we'll get three. If we remove the one, we get zero. Perfect. Okay, NAND. I mean, you can see the negation before this. The negation of... Th this part is self-explanatory. We're just passing it through the negation symbol. But as you can see, it works exactly as intended. Okay. So this should work. Can you fit four bits of memory or bytes of memory in this limited space? In this level, you have to build a circuit that can save or load from four different bytes of memory. You're given one bit that determines if you are able to load, another bit determines if you are to save, and it will come with a corresponding value. Additionally, you have two address bits. With two bits, there are four mem combinations, one for each byte of memory in this level. The output has an enable pin, enable it only on load. 
Oh, okay, and we have a, this amount of memory. Spacebar. Oh, okay, that's exactly what I wanted. Spacebar rotates components. Join wires in the middle and use right angles or this will be a mess. Never. Little box. Okay. We're getting to more complicated. Yeah, we'll we'll finish off this this level and then we'll end stream there. Okay. Maybe it might be helpful to keep this this. Yeah, there's no nothing new here. Um. Would it be helpful to keep this on the screen, maybe? Somewhere. I don't know. There isn't any important uh, info that my camera is covering, by the way. It's just like... It's not important. Don't look at it. Okay. Um... I think the first thing we need is... Can we move these? We can. Let's, let's just move this up. Or what we can do... Ah! We'll do it circular. There we go. So we do a circle. Um, so that's done. Never mind, I connected the wrong one. That's fine. Circle. As I said, circular. Actually, that's that's just, that's fine. We don't even need this to point in the right direction. Okay. Gotcha. Um, we should have 8-bit memories, right? Here we do. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh gosh, we're gonna need, we're gonna be needing 4 switches. Uh, or do we? Well, we don't need to. No need. Okay, we just all we're doing is we're just connecting all of these together. One giant line. So connecting all. No. We we'll connect you to we we'll connect these, connect these, and then connect these. Okay, like that. Um. So what we'll do? Can we label these? I guess we could. No, uh, well, I don't care. I don't care enough. We're going to be using four end gates. One, two, three, four. Uh, which corresponds to each... Let me move this down a bit. That corresponds to each of the possible states. So we connect like this. Um... This thing, we need to connect it to every... Wait, actually, is that the save component? Oh, there it is. Load, save, save value. Okay. Yeah, the save component is...
Wait, we only want the correct one to save, right? Wait, hang on. I need to test this out. I think this will not work. I'm guessing this will not work. Um, we'll do, we'll do A0, A1, B0, B1, can I, actually I should label these, just so I don't lose track of things. A0, and we're using labeling, we're doing comments, haha, -ha. I am a good programmer, except commenting is so annoying, how, there we go. A1, B0, B1. Okay. So we'll do this. So we need to put a negation there. Negation there. Negation there. Negation there. Is it, or do we need to flip them over? Almost certainly we have to flip the move, actually. Um, yes, we do. That's okay. That's okay. Easy enough to remember. Yeah, perfect. Then we just connect these to the first one. As I said, I do not give a damn. That's the wrong one. I'm sure I'll make a mistake at some point. Like, I made several of them actually. Hang on, I made so many mistakes. Here? Actually, that wasn't a mistake, but screw it. Here. 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 Okay. And now... Hmm, I did... Yeah, this will not work. Hang on. The saves, I also need to... Um... Gatekeep. I need another and. Ah, oh, fine, I'll do it angled. So annoying. There, you're happy. Happy. I need more space though. <laughs> Is it possible to fit a tiny switch? Maybe. Hang on. It's off, it's on. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful! Okay.
I'm sure this will work. Let's try it. Yes! In a, in an advanced civilization, forcing prisoners to do extremely menial tasks, slavery, and is technically illegal. That is why we instead had our intern create the 256 byte version of your component. That sounds incredibly cruel. <laughs> 256 bytes. Oh, okay, last level of the day. Counting is so fundamental, even insects do it. From counting, species can evolve to compare and do arithmetic. And before you know it, you have apes building computers. Make a device that counts increments once per tick. We should be fine again. Do I have no clue why it suddenly just like dropped massively in quality. It's always like near the, the for half an hour mark. Like one and a half or two and a half mark. This thing starts to go bad. Okay, whatever. We have one more problem. And that'll be that. Build a counter that will increase by one each tick. Additionally, there should be an option for overwriting the counter with a given value. You're given two inputs, a bit and a byte. The bit input should toggle between counting and overwriting with the value of the byte. Okay, I wasn't reading. Hang on. Each tick. Okay, I see. So. Um... Hmm. Hmm. Intriguing. How do we do this? Okay. My... Oh, is there... So we're obviously using a 8-bit registry. Okay, they're generally being incredibly loud outside. Um, we're using an 8-bit registry. Because they, they should... Wait, are we allowed to make a circular dependency for this? So even if we say do... Oh, we're not given the not. Okay, let's say we're given the add. That that is a bit, right? Uh, wrong wrong one. That one. Okay. Is there a way to disable the this thing? I just wanna to run it without having the tick. So this shit's Oh, hang on, maybe I need to turn it on. Yeah, 
yeah, it's not allowing me to... I have to actually build it properly. The only... I'm just going to assume it, it delays inputs by one. Although I don't think it, the actual implementation does. Um... I don't know. We're just gonna. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna just assume it delays it by one. Because it's the only way I can figure out how to do this. So. We're just gonna connect it there. Easy enough. We're gonna. Actually, why did I delete that circuit? I did exactly what I wanted it to, to do. Add. Connect this here. Connect this back to its... Well, no, we want to connect it to here. But that is effectively the value we're interested in, in making. Now we need a switch. Or a mux. Maybe a mux. Like that. And... Like that. Okay, what what do these things do, by the way? Oh, I think we want to permanently set both of these on. Yeah, like that. Cool. That's it. Okay. I think we've done enough. So, we have covered the classic, the, the fundamentals of how to build computer circuits, logic circuits, using gates honestly i'm having a lot of fun it could just be because i'm a nerd but this stuff is super interesting to learn the ins and outs of how a computer works and honestly i think they they progress uh, there isn't a lot of like i guess they do give you like practice examples for a lot of these maybe the game might benefit by giving it a few more practice on the side like, not as part of this core branch. I mean, it would make sense to have, like, a core branch of, like, this is, like, the stuff you need to advance to the next level. But here are some extra examples that you can do to kind of just get a firmer grasp on um, how these logic gates actually work and how to actually build logic circuits. But I think overall... This game does a pretty good job at getting you to understand like how how these things actually work. And also I like how they give you these um these these little tidbits on how to actually how these things actually work in the real life. Cuz it cuz it seems like this is a kind of a simulation thing where these uh, these things won't actually like exist. These are not like these are not how these components work in real life. So I like how they do tie it in. I give you like context. But yeah, I think overall so far I'm having fun. Um, I like learning, and you should too. Uh, but yeah, this is all. It's gonna get. It's only gonna get harder from here on out. So. Hopefully, you'll join me for the rest of the ride. 
if you even make it this far, don't know. Uh, but in any case, thank you very much for coming along. And I will see you another time. Bye-bye.